crowds on their feet for good reason. What a great fight. It was pretty much a pick and fight. Brown with three knockdowns, and that's it. Both fighters, hands in the air. What a great fight. Lived up to the building and the height. It had been four years since the iconic battle between Manny Pacquiao and Juan Manuel Marquez. Both fighters had had their share of trials and triumphs. But through it all, no one had forgotten the electricity, the drama, and the non-stop action of that first brutal, beautiful fight. The world demanded a rematch between the explosive Filipino powerhouse and the crafty Mexican counterpuncher. Now, finally, the stars had aligned, and the two would put to rest the controversy of their first encounter and take home a championship belt. Although much had changed, their first fight could offer some clues about the strengths and weaknesses of both men, and how they might adjust going forward. Four years earlier, Pacquiao's untraditional and risky body mechanics had earned him multiple knockdowns in the very first round. But it was this same blatant bending of the rules by Pacquiao that had allowed Marquez to come back. He had taken advantage of how far Pacquiao reaches with his punches and how deep he strays off angle with his footwork. He countered with thudding body punches to his exposed sides and uppercuts to counter his crouch. The longer the fight had gone, the more Marquez figured out Manny, outboxing him at long range and turning with him to negate his angles at mid range. Marquez took control of the fight until the seventh, when Pacquiao seemed to decide that enough was enough. He stayed close and kept punching, even if he got hit. And over the next few rounds, he got better and better at discerning when and how Marquez's counters were coming. Once the timing was down, Pacquiao could step away and then, if the opportunity presented itself, go right back to attacking. Marquez responded by giving all he had over the last several rounds, throwing endless combinations. The two went back and forth until the last second of the last round. In the end, the judges' scorecard had rendered a controversial split decision draw. But now, it was finally time for the two to pick up where they had left off. Pacquiao displayed his signature aggression right from the start. However, he seemed to have taken to heart the painful lessons learned in their first encounter. Rather than go all out, he was ready to leap back out of the way of Juan's punches at a moment's notice, perhaps wary of the many potential counters that had given him so much trouble before. At first, it also seemed that Marquez would take the more cautious approach that he had adopted soon after getting knocked down in their first bout. He again circled away from Pacquiao's jabs to limit his potential to throw crosses, playing the role of the crafty boxer foiling the charging brawler. But it soon became apparent that this wasn't fully the case, as Marquez was interspersing a number of risky, dangerous tactics that had been mostly absent before. Marquez was far more aggressive in his footwork, stepping in much deeper with his signature split steps. He even chained right into small shuffles to close the gap even further. He caught Pacquiao with the tremendous right using this tactic, the most impactful punch of the round. Marquez was also not shy about fighting for position, even if it meant stepping on Pacquiao's toes. And he seemed equally confident in fighting for position with upper body movement. He leaned in close to block Manny's head movement and set up new angles for his own punches. It wasn't long before this resulted in the two literally butting heads, in a fitting analogy of the battle of wills that would no doubt play out over the coming rounds. Sure enough, in the second, both fighters intensified their strategies. Pacquiao jumped in and out at angles with a frenetic pace. Marquez looked to counter with long rights, and surprised Pacquiao by lobbing one-off power shots from long range. Once again, this was reliant on high-risk footwork. And so, the lead foot battle also heated up. 
Marquez's long, high steps pinned Pacquiao to the floor multiple times. The last of which put Pacquiao off balance enough to badly cost him an exchange. He ate a hard lead hook. Two rounds in, Marquez was so far proving the sharper of the two. But in the third, Marquez's fight fire with fire attitude ended up costing him badly. Pacquiao was charging head first while Marquez was standing firm and leaning in to counter. While this had resulted in a number of head clashes, Marquez's counters were doing major damage. But Dinamita could only play with fire so long before he set off an explosion. After a very successful exchange, Marquez got overconfident and lobbed a hard right with no setup or change in angle. Pacquiao countered immediately with a rear hook, sending the seasoned Mexican boxer tumbling to the canvas. Marquez was up right away, but then almost went down again just before the bell. He had been dealt a stark reminder of what it meant to take a clean shot from one of the most explosive fighters to ever enter the ring. Things could be going very well against Manny Pacquiao, right up until the point where they weren't. The ferocious Filipino capitalized on his knockdown over the next round, dominating Marquez. But Marquez's tight counters, long combinations, and underrated jab kept him in the fight. But just like last time, Pac-Man seemed to lose the initiative the longer the fight went on. Marquez got his timing down and dealt out more and more punishment over the next several rounds. He proved once again that he was one of the greatest counterpunchers of all time. It's common knowledge that southpaws usually strive to take the outside foot position to align their rear hand while staying safe from their opponent's rear hand. Pacquiao often defied common convention by stepping inside to align his jab. He would then angle in deeper to pivot away or swivel into a hard left. This had worked fairly well the first fight. But now, Marquez had found the perfect angle from which to counter. Over and over again, Marquez stepped deep outside just as Pacquiao moved inside. This counter step further aligned Marquez's right hand and shortened the distance it needed to travel. Pacquiao was finding himself caught flush in a position where he would normally expect to be safely closed off from those same punches. Marquez was one of the few fighters to ever capitalize on the fact that Pacquiao would put himself in inferior positions on purpose, which is a pretty big testament to the skill of both fighters. However, in the seventh, Marquez ended up on the bad side of yet another unintentional headbutt. A small cut opened over his right eye. Pacquiao immediately tried to capitalize, but Marquez's vision was not impaired, and the biggest impact of the cut was felt by the fans. They got to watch some incredible action as Pacquiao battled Marquez until the end of the round. Ironically, it was Pacquiao who would suffer the consequences of a bad cut in the very next round. The same split step to shuffle that had been the bane of Pacquiao's fadeaway shoulder roll the entire night got him caught again. But this time, the punch connected so solidly that Pacquiao's eyelid was badly damaged. He could barely see, and Marquez was able to bully him through the remainder of the eighth.
Pacquiao's team did a solid job of fixing his cut in the corner, and he was back in form the very next round. And then, the tables turned once more. Pacquiao landed a beautiful double jab hook, Marquez mistiming his rear hand catch. And then, once again with the same just a few moments later. Now the small cut that had opened two rounds before was no longer a small cut. It was a large problem, and the ref had to take Marquez to the corner to have him checked by a doctor. The fight continued, and Marquez's corner also did a fantastic job closing up the cut after the round. However, there was only so much that they could do with such a deep wound. Marquez's troubles continued in the 10th. Right away, Pacquiao wobbled Marquez with a beautiful counter. Marquez had been throwing a hard lead hook over the last several rounds. And Pac-Man was too smart of a boxer not to eventually take advantage of such a blatant punch. He ducked outside and crossed over a beautiful intercepting overhand. Still, Marquez's iron chin kept him standing. This was only the beginning of the round, and the two were competitive for the remainder of the 10th. And he's got to try to end it here too. Wow, this thing could turn in a dive when Manny gets going. Marquez still a little wobbly. My goodness, two countries, two fighters representing their respective nations. This is what boxing's all about. The fight was still very much up for grabs in the 11th. Manny changed tactics somewhat and displayed some more defensive skills. However, Marquez started the 12th and final round off very strong. He couldn't seem to miss with his counters. And went back on the offensive. But nothing spurs Pacquiao into action like a real fight, and he ramped up the intensity even further. The two traded with barely any time to breathe for the remainder of the round. Until the bell announced the end of yet another classic bout. It had been an exhibition of equal skill and grit that had been even more thrilling than their first encounter. Whoever had won on the cards, it was now clear that these two warriors had been made to face each other. After all was said and done, the judges gave a split decision win to Manny Pacquiao, who had now held belts in four weight classes. But if anything, this fight was more controversial than the last and the two were fated to meet again. Stay tuned as we cover the remaining fights. If you're interested in learning more, you can check out my books on footwork, defense, and power. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.